Welcome to Mimiki TV. I'm your host, Mimiki Kuni. Get ready to break through barriers, fuel your faith, pursue your purpose, and market your message so you can impact the marketplace for God. Hi everyone, it's Mabika Cooney and welcome to another day. Now we are certainly living in exciting times. Um, most of us around the world are probably sitting at home in lockdown or shelter at home, as some of us call it. Well, this has been quite exciting because um, for the first time in, I don't know, this generation, we all, the rat race has been cancelled. Now that's good news because we get to sit um, and think and do some things that, and maybe get to projects that we never really thought about. Um, but of course, we do acknowledge the fact that this is a serious issue the world is facing. Um, and I do believe the world won't be the same again. But the good news is there are always opportunities. What goes down must come up. And what I wanted to do today is just pop in and check with you all and see how you're doing and really just kind of give some encouragement. Now, of course, um, I, I wouldn't have known this two years ago, but two years ago I wrote two books that are now becoming far more relevant in today's society, especially with regards to mindset, worry, and fear. Now, the, one of the things that I feel important to share is that um, even though we know the reality of what we're hearing every day, we looking at the news, numbers are going up, um, That we know that is true, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has to it really changed the way that we feel and think about life because I know sometimes we can feel a little guilty for being happy when the rest, when things are happening in the world that aren't really good. But what I can tell you is that it's important for us to shift our thinking and to really start adapting to a new mindset of accepting that how things will be different. And some people I've been seeing online have posted a few things that Sometimes this uncomfortable feeling we're having is almost likened to grief. You know, when you have an idea of, or you have a relationship with someone and you always have this hope and expectation of what would be, and all of a sudden that just dramatically and just ends and you kind of kind of come to terms with that. So I think we're having a lot of emotions. I mean, I myself, I feel one day I feel positive, the next minute I'm like crying like a baby because I'm like, what is going on? It feels very out of control. Now, the good thing is, is that it's always a good reason for a reset. It's always a good reason to sit back and to think, think okay, is this fear real or is it imagined? Now, of course, the what is going on is real, but how it affects our lives is really up to us. So I really wanted to offer encouragement today that um, you don't necessarily need to have this dictate your thinking and your feelings because even psychologists will agree that how you think determines how you feel and how you act so if you find like you sort of biting everybody's head off in the house and acting really really um stressed it could be that you've allowing your thoughts to get uh, a little away from you so i've got two of my books that i wanted to share with you today that i'll be giving away for so for those who stay and watch and comment online um i'll be offering um the the book so the, the books i have are um the mind, the warrior to warrior, mother's journey from fear to faith, which is really my testimony and story of how I was able to work through fear and anxiety, a lot of mental stuff, as well as a shorter version. This is mindset makeover, which is how to renew your mind and walk in God's authority. So, if you'll like me, I would like to read a little bit from the book and give you a little bit of um, encouragement. So it says here: as soon as you start feeling worried, recognize that fear is a spirit. Okay, it's. It's out to torment you and by using your mouth to speak God's truth from his word. Speaking 2 Timothy 1.7 scripture out loud helps you to gain the victory, to start creating good thinking habits by taking every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. Now, what this means is that as you get that thought, you don't need to let it run away and affect the way you, you act and your moods. We can recognize what fear is and then start to really um, understand it. So here is a good prayer to release yourself from worry. So a good thing to say is, you know, thank you, Lord, that your word says you don't you don't give me a spirit of fear, but of divine power, love and a sound mind. I thank you that I can put my trust in you to work all things out for good. I cast out the spirit of fear and worry and command to go now in Jesus name. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind and heart and protect myself with the armor of God so I can fight off the attacks of the enemy. Thank you for delivering me in Jesus' name. Now, the reason why we also mention the name of Jesus is because there's power and authority in it. So if even if you're not a believer, I want to encourage you to say that now is the time for us to start really thinking about what we believe because we are in a situation that is beyond anybody's control physically. Um, 
you know, we, it, the whole world has to think about this differently, that there has to be a greater purpose to all this. Now, I'm not saying that God creates evil or he creates these things, but I know he, from experience in my own life, he is able to turn the mess into a magnificent message that can really help others. So I believe that what you have, your story, your life, your purpose is not just for yourself, but it's to help others. So let me offer you a little more encouragement from my um, other book, The Warrior to Warrior, A Mother's Journey from Fear to Faith. Now, this has really been, anxiety has always been part of my life. And I didn't realize it. I just thought it was the way everybody thought and the way everybody functioned. And somebody likened it to the fact of, you know, when you're walking around in the way you see the world through your glasses, you think it looks clear. Until somebody gives you a pair of spectacles that puts it in sharp focus, then you realize, well, hey, maybe this isn't the way I'm meant to see things or how this this waking up in the morning and having that anxiety, you know, your chest feels tight, you're like, oh. You can feel the, the cortisol building in your system and then your heart rate starts going and you, you either start getting shaky or, you, you know, you start to, to start getting um, very emotional. I just thought that's how everybody functioned. And I didn't realize that that was not a way to live until I got to a stage in my life where my physical body shut down and I was in a situation uh, from dealing with a teenage, suicidal teenager to losing a close family member to having a, a business failure, my physical body eventually couldn't take the living on adrenaline. My adrenal system was fatigued. I literally couldn't get up in the morning. I was very emotional. And normally I'm a very happy-go-lucky person, but for the first time in my life, I, I just didn't know how to function. And I had to look deep within myself to realize what was going on. Now, I'm always the kind of person to figure out what is the issue. And if there's a problem, I need to find a solution. I don't like a band-aid approach of just pretend it's not there. So sometimes it takes us asking the hard questions like what is it that I need to learn about myself what is it that I need to look into that maybe fear is driving my life maybe fear is driving my thought process um, and knowing that anxiety doesn't have to be a label you don't have to have somebody tell you you're suffering from x y z it doesn't have to be your identity so I want to encourage you that you are meant to live a life of freedom you're meant to live a life of you know, of victory, that you don't need to be a victim of fear, anxiety, and be ruled by that. So let me read you a little bit from um, Warrior to Warrior. It says, yeah, um, the, this, the Office of the Surgeon General conducted a study of combat soldiers who, who were in Iraq. The findings concluded that the level of combat was the main deter detriment of soldiers' mental health status. The length of deployment and family separations were considered the top mitigating factors. The suicide rates amongst combat soldiers was higher than the average rate. And PST, PTSD is considered commonplace amongst those high, who have experienced high levels of conflict, conflict. In today's society, our levels of stress are off the charts. Many individuals display the same signs of stress as a soldier would with PTSD. The studies have found that those who've, who've been exposed to multiple stresses, and this is according to the December issue of the American Psychological Association, APA Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, said that the average high school student today has the same level of anxiety as the average psychiatric patient had in the 1950s. But let's just put that a little into context that the everyday person is dealing with the same level of anxiety and stress that would have hospitalized someone in the 50s, which just goes to show there's something is wrong with our society if we embrace anxiety and fear as a just commonplace. And I want to encourage you that that doesn't have to be you. We don't have to be a statistic. We don't have to just think that it's just normal to feel fear and anxiety. There are ways and means that we can overcome that by first, I believe, taking captive of our thoughts and recognizing when we have an anxiety attack or we have, we feel like oh, we have this runaway thoughts, like, you know, something triggers and then the next minute you're in the worst place case scenario and you eventually get yourself more worried about what could be than what is. So let me offer you some encouragement. So here's a prayer that's from the book, um, I'd release yourself from anxiety. It says, dear Lord, thank you for unfading love. I choose to place my trust in you. Please deliver me from the anxiety and break off the spirit of fear. With your strength, I take captive every negative thought that it tries to steal my joy. And I thank you for delivering me from the spirit of fear and anxiety in Jesus' name. Now, of course, always follow the advice of your medical practitioner when it comes to treating anxiety and mental health. I'm just here to offer you some encouragement that you can take action today.
So for those who've been able to watch today live, um, if you're interested in getting a copy of Warrior Toria and Mindset Makeover, the first person, the first people who can who can um, reply yes me in the comments will be um, will I'll be sending a signed and uh, paperback version. So we'll just get in connection with each other um, so I can get your mailing address. But if you're interested in that, make sure to post in the comments and the first person to claim Warrior to Warrior and another person who wants to claim Mindset Makeover, go ahead and do that. So I've got to say thanks for joining me today if you were watching live, as well as those who are watching the replay. I'm going to offer you the encouragement. And those who are listening perhaps on the podcast version, I just want to say you, you can do this. We can overcome fear. Fear doesn't have to drive our, our lives. We just need to recognize when it happens and really really relying on God for our strength in these times, I feel is super, super important. So I'm thinking and praying for you all, hoping that you have uh, found encouragement for today and hope to connect with you soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.